What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to uh, do some mediocre roof repair, battle some LS platform transmission issues that I didn't know nothing about, and uh, do some frame mock-up so we can get this thing made into a roller. So uh, yeah, let's dig right into the action. First thing I notice here is this whole section is pulled in. If you look down the line of the car, See if I can give you guys a good shot of that. I don't know how well you can see that for sure. But right here, this is even the um, drawn a blank. Even the structure, I guess, is the best one I come up with, has a dimple in it here where it's pulled over. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is get me a jack of some sort in here and go to the base over there with a block or something or pipe, I don't know. <clears throat> and put some tension on this coming out and uh, start working this metal above it. Now on the inside, some of that is double layer and uh, can't see the greatest, but a lot of that is double layer in there and it's gonna be hard to, hard to get in there to really fine tune it uh, right, right in this corner. I'm not looking for perfect. I'm not looking for perfection uh, or, you know, I'm just looking for a little bit better than it is. So, so we can get done. Basically my goal with this car is to make it look okay, not even good from the stands of a racetrack. And um, my thoughts are with this here is the way I want to run the Nerf bars down the side here for side protection because the tires aren't gonna have no fenders obviously, but eventually the top part of this door will probably get cut loose and the bottom will stay when you open the door the bottom half of it will probably stay there and then um the top will be the only thing that actually opens uh, a lot of them cars back in the day they just cut this rolled it over whatever but i'm wanting to keep the body lines but i have to be able to fit my fat ass in and out of here so um yeah I'm gonna try, my, my thoughts are right now, I haven't even looked at the hinge locations, is to cut this door at an angle of some sort to maintain the hinges on, hinges, hinges on the top part, the bottom part be welded to the car, I'll cop, yeah, my brain is toast today, I can't talk, I'll cap the bottom of the door so that, um, you know, it's not all floppy and stuff, and I'll cop, I'm just going to give up on talking. I'm going to start swinging a hammer and see if I can get anything accomplished. Went ahead and got the, uh, this is why I gave up talking. The rear window out. Um, my concern was is pushing on it that we might crack it or uh, tear up that window garnish molding. So got that out of the way. <clears throat> Here's our reckon. <clears throat> Man, it's been a rough freaking week. Uh, here's our redneck um, body ram. Uh, JR does not approve. Got the bottle jack wedged over there and ran over here into this corner. So we're going to start giving her some uh, pressure, see if we can't get this out and try to get some of this close. And I'm not just going to just run it all at once i'm gonna to try to as we go work on this um this metal here and get it to go back where it should be so let's give her some pressure and see what happens uh oh something's happening my jack Jack is peeing everywhere. I don't think it's in very good shape. Here we go, let's go. Well, I don't know if we gain anything or not. Definitely not. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think it did anything. Let's uh let's set up the red nickery and try again. Is she moving? 
Something's happening. Uh, we were starting to spread apart some of those cracks and actually made that one worse. That thing's cracked all the way up in there. So uh, it's going to take some love to get that back in shape. It's even ripping and cracking up in there. I mean, that's, that's quite a ways up there. So I think... I'll leave some tension on this. We got about three inches of the hydraulic ram on that jack pushing out on it. And I don't, I think probably an inch of that was just getting it out to the board. So we probably moved it two inches already. So I want to bust out the uh, old hammers here and give her some wax and see what we can get. And uh, I can't make it any worse, right? Pulled that jack and uh, walk out, and uh, it's still got, I don't know how much of that you guys can see, um, it still has a, a little bit of a dip. Whew. I think part of the problem is I'm pushing the roof up, uh, but it still has a little bit of a dip here. I was trying to compare it to the other side to see how straight this is. And um, the other side is really straight. Um, as far as it doesn't have all these waves and stuff in it right here. But I don't know that I'll ever get those out. But the way I'm pushing on it, I'm, I'm setting the jack in that corner there on the rocker. And obviously bringing this block of wood up here and, and hitting up here in the corner but I'm pushing more up than out. And I think the main, the main thing that I'm fighting right now is it needs to come out a little bit. And I know I'll never get it perfect. I'm okay with that. That wasn't my goal. It already looks a lot better than what it did. It still looks like doo-doo, but um, I would like to get this area here. I would like to get that a lot better. I know that I'll never get this, uh, um, gutter edge or whatever that you want to call that that drip rail i know that i'll never get that right but this here is still cinched in where this is pushed up i don't know what the resources i have here in the shop i don't know that i've got a way 
to pull down on this like I want to. Um, I guess I could weld a tab on it and pull on it with the come along, but I don't know what I'm going to hook to. Hook it back to the floor of the uh, body, you know what I mean? I think you're just going to move problems you start doing that stuff. I don't have any anchors in the floor or anything like that in here. Hmm. Brainstorming on this one for a minute. And I noticed I did. I just killed the tripod. I did notice our door is worse, if that's possible, as we as we move stuff around. Which tells me we probably did push that up and pull this B post in, which is awesome. Yeah, not real sure. If you look in there, oh yeah, we're like an inch too, we're like an inch too low on that striker. I don't know if you can see that or not. Look at that, our top is hitting the top of that. This is supposed to go in this slot and we're not even close. I don't know. Oh, there it goes. Man, I get that shut again, I'll never get it open. That honestly, you get this part up where it goes, that isn't as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, it, I mean it's horrible, but... I don't know why people do the things they do. How cool would it have been if they would have just threw a 4x4 through there and grabbed each end of it? I mean, it still tore things up, but it wouldn't have been like this. Huh. I think that the whole grip rail right here needs to come down. Maybe it's just the... Look out, puppy. Maybe it's just this lip that needs to come down and not the actual structure. Let's go look at the other side, see how it's made. I don't know. I'm not familiar with these cars at all to know how they're, uh, what they should look like. I don't have any lights on over here, but it's kind of hard to see. That drip rail on this side, I don't know if you can see that, it sticks out the depth of my finger probably. So, Let's go back over there and see what we got on the other side. <clears throat> I'm guessing. Yeah. I can fit my finger up in there on the other side. And the other side's damaged too, but not nearly as heavy. Yeah. I think that's what we need to do. This needs to come out somehow. I think this is probably fine. This uh, structural piece. It's just this sheet metal is supposed to have a flat and then go up for the roof and it's just pulled in and smashed shut. How I'm going to get that out, I haven't a clue. I don't think it's something that I can get in there and pry and if I do, I'm just going to mangle it even more. Hmm. Not real sure what to do. I'm not sure how far to take this either. I mean, how much do you polish a turd? Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna think on this one for a minute and see what I can uh, see if I can come up with any ideas. So I did a bunch of uh, I did a bunch of um, staring and staring at it. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that this B pillar needs to come out probably another uh, quarter to half inch. And then in front of it here, I probably need to get something that goes straight across. And then this part needs, the B pillar is kind of rolled this way. 
the front of this area here is rolled in. I think I need to get something across there and try to roll that back. And that will pull a lot of this lip back where it ain't like it is. Back where it should be. Um, so we've got the board set back up in here. Got our redneck porta power set up. I'm gonna crank on that a little bit more, push this out. She's creaking, so something's happening. I don't know how far I ran that ram out. I guess I should have measured that, but I think that's making a difference. If I could get, see this one kink that's laid in there this way? If I can get that out, that would help allow this to lay over a little bit more too. I think think that might help as well as I might get the floor jack over here and go straight on the rough because it's, it's more of a flat radius right now than what it should be. It should be more of a curved. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to keep working at it until we make it gooder. I think I think this is my nemesis right now is if I can get that to where it's not a crease going inward, that would allow uh it would allow this part to go up and then it would start to pull this out. That's my thoughts. I don't know. So somewhere I have a giant piece of brass, it's like a foot long, two inches wide, and about an inch thick, that is mushroomed on the ends, that would be absolutely perfect. What I found is absolutely not perfect, and it is gnarly, but whatever. definitely moving that material in the right direction so I'm gonna keep doing the right thing the wrong way and uh, hammering on that to get some of this radius back and uh, see what happens here You know, I might be better off to, as buggered as that is, just use it backwards. Ow. I know there's so many body men out there yelling at their screen right now. <laughs> That's okay, because when it comes to this, I am. Some of you have heard me talk about my uh, injuries and health crap I got going on. One of those things, well, what do we got going on here? The handle of the tripod sitting on top of the door. Wow, well, look at there. That door opens a lot further than I thought it did. Uh, the things with the brain injuries and spinal cord uh, injuries both is that make you wear out really fast. And I'm already whooped. I was whooped before I started making the video. I'm really whooped now. And uh, like struggling to hold that chisel up. And, uh, but I'm determined and bullheaded, so I'm gonna keep going. But that's why you're seeing me screw up a lot. That's also why I mispronounce words a lot too. Is I get, uh, the brain gets, the old brain gets tired and I get what they call neuro fatigue. So anyway, enough of the depressing stuff. Let's uh, spin metal. Try to anyway. Maybe we'll bend hands again. I don't know, it depends on how many times I miss. <laughs> Breathing so much Kansas in, it's not even funny. Nasty. Duh.
Well, from what it was, this right here is the deepest point between, you know, here and up here where it's normal. That's only in about an inch now. And uh, that's pretty dang good compared to what it was, which I don't know how much rebound we're going to get when we take this off. I'm sure it'll be a bit, but... I just don't know how I can get on that lip. Maybe I could weld something in there and pull on it. Pull, you know, weld a lip on there. And, uh, might have to do it when the car's complete so it weighs a little bit more, but weld a tab on there that I can hook to the forklift or something heavy and come along on it or, or another vehicle. Man, we're, we're making some headway though. Be interesting to see a side-by-side -side shot. Three days later. Ooh. Mm. I don't know where I had my thumb. That wasn't the right place. Ooh. I ain't taking gloves off. Nope. Then it didn't happen. I'm not putting my thumb back. That hurts, boys. Whew. I don't know if I'm going to hold on to that no more. I am not taking that thumb off either because that was... I don't know how the dolly was positioned in there, but basically I had the side of my thumb on a piece of metal like that, and then when I hit that dolly, that edge of that metal went into it. And uh, it felt amazing. But I think I might... Uh, taking cue from continuously smashing digits on my hand. Uh, I might just need to call it a day and re-pick re up tomorrow. All right, a couple days later, Austin, uh, Austin has worked on getting all the garnish moldings out of the car. Uh, I got the quarter glasses out, um, but the garnish moldings there. And then he started on this door and it was whooping him pretty good, but we got the um, uh, door panel off, the door card off, garnish molding, wing window out. My concern there was, you know, all that stuff's got a little bit of value. My concern was we was going to end up tearing that stuff up while trying to get this roof pulled out. Um, so I had Austin do that the last couple of days. He busted his butt on that, did it uh, all on his own. So that was pretty cool. But what I've got going on now is some redneck engineering we got quarter inch wall two by two here ran over with the jack slid up in it they already had a hole in it so we just slid a bolt in there so the jack's pushing on that bolt and then the jack's laying on that three by four or whatever that board is against the b pillar on the passenger side and uh so i know it's gonna tear up the sheet metal on the inside here where this tubing's pushing. I don't care. Um, my goal here is to get this rail right here pushed out to make this profile look gooder. Um, that's my goal right now. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go over there and crank on that jack a little bit, see if we can get this whole area pushed out another inch or so. And I know I know these things never show on camera, but there's a crease that runs right here that um, is from that whole center of that car being folded up, I'd imagine. So not only is it pulled in, but the top of this roof is pulled up like that. I don't know that I'm ever gonna get that part out of it. And you can see that real bad when I close the door. The door is, um, look how low that is. And uh, I don't, and if you guys seen it in the first video, I had a heck of a time getting this door open. It has dropped here some. Um, I don't, I don't hold a lot of value in that stainless. I've seen these cars that look good and that stainless is that far off you know, as far as the body um, gaps being good. And the factory stainless is not that great on some of these older cars. So I'm going to guess the 
door is dropped maybe an eighth of an inch in the front, which could translate to that back here. Um, but I'm going to go with, because if you look at this, I think they, well, you can't tell as much now, but when they started pulling on this, I think they had the door open to start with on this side. And that's why this side pulled up so much. So instead of cutting the car in half with their chain, they unhooked the chain, closed the door and tore up the door as well. So yeah, that's, that's what we're fighting right now. I'm not too worried about getting this crown out as long as I can make this look good. That's, that's my thoughts. Um, this looks, and I, like I said, I know it always looks way different on camera than it does in person. This looks horrible. And, uh, I'm just trying to make it look good or not, not perfect. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll go over there to the other side. I'm going to put you guys on the tripod and we'll go over there on the other side and crank on that jack a little bit. See if we can't get this to come out. So. I don't know if you guys, if the camera picked it up, but I could hear it crinkling and crackling in the A pillar. So it's definitely moving some. And it's, it's adding a whole new level of distortion to this, uh, to this here. But I think we're gaining on it. I kind of wish I hadn't pried that drip rail out so I could get a better view of what it's doing uh, as we move the material. You know they call, have something called a quarter power, right? I've got one. It's right here. What do you do you want? It's definitely going. Oh, she's a crackling. Hey, we kind of got Well... <clears throat> I don't know how much of this is going to rebound back in. We'll have to light that off and see, but I think I'm going to call that good enough for now on this roof. Um, I don't know if I can get, I don't know. I hate the idea of putting filler in there because I know it's going to get blown out, but I might just leave it like that. Uh, maybe put a patch in there to tie this roof panel back together. But for now, I'm going to call that good enough. I might work on that passenger side a little bit, but it's not near as bad. Um, I won't bore you guys with that one, but I want to get cranking on the frame on this thing. So that's where I think I'm going to head next. And it's not going to be a five minute job. So I want to get that done and make this thing into a roller sooner than later. Uh, the milestones help, help, I don't care who you are, they always are a motivator when you can see the thing roll on its own, on its own tires or when you fire it up the first time. So that's kind of where I want to go is get, um, get closer to making this thing a roller and then I can start fabbing on the suspension and all that stuff. I enjoy that a lot better than beating on this tin. So yeah, I think I'll call that good for now. I am going to go over there, uh, let this jack off and, uh, that's not horrible. I'm going to lat the jack down and um, see how bad this shrinks in. But right now, I'll give you guys a look here. Right now, it's looking pretty decent. Um, compared to what we started with, which, you know, was not good at all. But she's pretty good her. Let that jack down and see what we get out of it. It's good enough for now. Let's, uh, let's get started on this frame. So obviously back here, the frame rail ran right there. So we're no, we know we're going to keep it right there. And if I turn you guys around, it looks like if you look at it from that angle, I don't see any reason why we can't run that frame straight right there and maintain, maintain that line all the way down through there and out the front. 
looks like I can probably get away with making them six foot for now. And uh, I can cut them down if need be and try one more time to get a better tape measure, or uh, get another measurement. So putting that on the back of the jack stand, that puts six foot right here, just out of video range. Six foot's right there off the back of that jack stand. And that would give me plenty to start that arch going up that way. So let's go back up front and see where the back of that jack stand uh, falls with the firewall. So I measured to the back of this jack stand here and that was six foot. That's basically uh, where the frame's gonna start to kick up to come up front here. I've got plenty of room here for my step up. I think I'll go like six foot, six inches and uh, that'll give me extra. I can cut it off if I need to or push it to the back, cut it off back there. Um, also, I just had another thought. This engine cradle The engine cradle is significantly narrower than what that body is where the frame needs to sit. So I, I'm gonna have to figure that in too. These frame rails do not sit in here perpendicular with the uh, cradle. They sit at an angle, just a tad. So we'll have to figure that out as well. But that doesn't mean we can't get our center section fabbed up. And what I'll probably do is get two of them cut at six, six, whatever we'd go with and then get them on a, a table and find out our width we need and then go ahead and put a temporary cross member in there. So basically I have a big rectangle to deal with and um, then I gotta figure out wheelbase, which I think I'm going for 117 inch wheelbase. Uh, the best I can tell that was the factory wheelbase. I might go just a tad bit longer, I don't know um that it matters really but as of right now i think we'll just go cut those six foot six i'll get a measurement width wise i really wish i could find my books for these cars because it would tell me exact measurements and we would for the most part in the center we could duplicate that frame and then just change it up you know to make our suspension work in the back and then the front obviously firewall forward we do whatever we need to do but anyway no rambling, let's go cut some iron. What I'm doing is I'm cutting these both at the same time. That way I know even if they're a little bit off, they're both off equally. So my goal is two seven foot rails for now. I might cut them down later, but we're, uh, we're cutting them both at the same time. That way if they're all, both off an eighth inch, or yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. They're both off if, they're, if one's off. All right, did some thinking, some measuring, some more thinking, measuring again, because I forgot the measurements. And uh, I think I got to figure out how I can do it. Measuring, pulling off, pulling off basically the center of the rear end. So right now we're not where anybody's at. And, uh, ew, that's, that's not gonna work. The tape measure is at 117 inches, or my thumb is. You can see how close that is to the firewall. That's not gonna work. Um, that's horrible. There's no way the wheelbase on this car was 117 inches. There's just no freaking way. It'd look like that dude off of the Simpsons with the big overlip. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because there'd be more There'd be more car in front of the tire. There's, there's just as much in front of the tires. There'd be, yeah. It'd look ugly is what I'm trying to say. And the proportions would be funky. Um, yeah. So now I got to think on this. Daggone. Nothing's ever easy. I hate what stuff makes me think. I'm leaning more towards 130. Man, that sure does look off. I don't know. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to put some frame rails up here 
and uh, just start laying some stuff out and sit back and look at it and see what we can come up with. And the bad part is, is the part of the shop that I'm using, um, the one that has heat, uh, it's not very wide, so you can't really step back and get a good look and stuff. So what we'll probably have to do is get this front frame rail mocked up and just tack weld it together good enough that this thing will somewhat sit on it and roll it outside so I can actually see the side of it. But I'm thinking more like 130-inch wheelbase, which I don't even know how that compares. What's a metric... What's a metric GM? I think they're 121, maybe? Like a G-body? Hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking 130 inches, which... Uh, I'm trying to look here. It looks like the firewall... I know that's upside down. The firewall is roughly 103 inches. So 27 inches to the center of the tire. And I'm running some pretty big tires, so I think the tires I'm planning on running are probably close to 33 inches tall. So you're looking at 15, 16 inches of tire behind the center line. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to do more thinking. Well, I, uh, I've been whooped by technology. I cannot stand wiring. It, it shouldn't, you shouldn't need 18,000 miles of wire to make an engine run. And uh, this is the first one of these I've actually like tore apart. I've pulled a bunch of these, but we did it in the same manner that um, uh, you guys saw us on the previous video, how we pull them out. As far as tearing into them, not something I've done, not something I care to do. I'm not a fan of modern motors. And uh, so I'm down to this plug-in. Why do you need a sensor on your oil pan? I haven't figured out how that comes apart yet. And uh, I want to quit for the evening before I just cut it because I want to cut it. Um, so yeah, call it an evening for now. Tomorrow I'm going to get the uh, cherry picker in here, engine hoist, whatever you want to call it. Get this picked up so I can finish getting the uh, transmission off of it. And I want to get the three speed on it. Like I said earlier, get it set in there, see what it looks like. And what I'll probably do is get them front frame rails just stuck out a ways, leave them a little long, and then um, just set this on there and play with it and see what kind of um, wheelbase looks right with an engine and everything sitting in there. So I will catch you guys in the morning. It is the next day and when I went to bed, it was like mid forties outside, I believe. And we woke up to this crap. There's a reason they say if you don't like the weather in Indiana, give it five minutes, it'll change. So, the engine hoist I have at the shop that I had planned on dragging out to use ain't got no legs. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dane. Don't know where they're at, why they're not on it. No idea. So, we're driving out to the house to get a um, another engine hoist that I'm not sure we're going to be able to get because it has a lawnmower between it and the overhead door. And the last I knew, it didn't have a battery in it. And it's 25 degrees outside, and I don't feel like jacking with that. So, what we might end up doing is just stealing the legs out of that engine hoist in hopes that they'll, they'll fit the engine hoist I have at the shop. The, the, the one I have at the shop is not a very good hoist. I apologize for that bumpiness. I'm trying to drive here and that maximize our time. But the engine hoist I have at the shop is pretty janky 
I don't even know for sure that it works at this point. Obviously, it's been so long since I've used it, I don't know what happened to the legs. So, usually just use the forklift or the skid steer or something like that. But, uh, get, get the forklift in the shop we're using. Can, just can't lift up the forks high enough to put a bugger in. So, that's what we're up to right now. Got the old uh, engine hoist back in the shop. And this thing <laughs> was nasty. I was trying to think of the last time we used this. I think the last time that we used this was either right before my accident or right after my accident, which was in 2016. So what is that? Uh, exactly eight years ago, basically, was my accident. So, yeah. Amazingly, it pumped up. I didn't have to add any fluid. It's missing two wheels, but they're in the middle. I don't care. So, um, I got over here and I was getting ready to figure out a way to pick up this um ls and i took off this little goofy rod that was here like so and the only thing i can assume that is for is that protects the back of that fuel rail uh in an accident because it i mean that's all it does but it's got this goofy little triangle gusset thing on there that hits on the intake so the reason I took that off, um, for one, I was looking at using that to hook to, but it actually has one bolt and then this goofy peg on the other end. Not crazy about hanging a motor off that. Um, but I don't have any metric bolts here. And I don't know what that transfers to metric, but it's a 15 millimeter head. So I was able to find two of them. There was one here that had a ground hook to it. I'm gonna use that and the one that was on that bracket on the other side, I'm gonna go over the plasma table and cut me a bracket with a big eye in the end of it. That way I can at least have two bolts um, bolted to the back of the head. And I am not sure what to hook to up here in the front. Um, when we pulled this out of the truck, I wrapped a strap around each exhaust manifold towards the back and then just had a one inch strap and it was pretty balanced. I just had a one inch strap that we hooked around the water pump and um, used that to just hold a little tension and have any weight on it. But obviously I don't want to pick the motor up that way. So I haven't figured out what we're going to do in the front yet. Not sure what this thing is that goes to that heat riser of some sort, but looks like a fella might be able to go around that and get away with picking up on it. Maybe go here to that corner at an angle. I don't have to have this real um, uh, level on the hoist. I can get it in there and then pick it up with jacks or whatever to get it straight to do any fab work for motor mounts, that type thing. So that might be what I do. I might just make one for that back corner over there, which would be the driver's side corner where that goofy bracket was, and then come up here to this other corner. Uh, somebody out there in YouTube land, tell me what this stupid plug-in is down there. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with the oil pan and why there's a sensor going in the oil pan, but that's the only plug-in I haven't been able to figure out how to get apart. The injector ones fought me for a minute, and that wasn't because it was, I was doing it wrong. I was doing it right. They were so full of gunk that the little clip in there that you squeeze on the end of it that opens up to let it release, that's so much crap behind it, it was just flexing and wouldn't let it release. So, got to figure out what that is yet, and I'm hoping to do that when I get it picked up so I'm not laying on the floor try to unplug that so go cut a bracket and i think those are uniform surely the god they are yeah so i should be able to put it on either side if i decide to um whatever we gotta do once i cut that bracket so let's go get that cut and we'll figure out the front here's what we came up with these two bolts obviously go in the head this one will come up at roughly a 45 with that that bolt hole there i believe i put in as an inch so it's got a little bit of slag on the back side but i'm not gonna worry about it i'm gonna take it over here and see if it's going to uh do what we wanted to do yeah as long as my spacing on them holes is right which i'm pretty sure it is 
looks like the angle could be a couple degrees off or uh tilted a little bit but i just eyeballed it and made it a 45 so pretty happy with that i'm not getting birds off we'll get it thrown on there let's see how this goes i don't know how much of things are going to bend i don't know i don't even know anybody know what an ls even weighs i don't know i don't know that i've ever weighed one of these this one is aluminum heads i don't know how much weight savings that is if any let's let's see if we can break some Here's the current situation. My three speed plan of running a three speed manual is not going to happen. For some reason, I had the wrong idea in my head that it's not that hard to adapt an old school manual to an LS. It turns out I was completely wrong. That's going to cost me quite a bit of money. I'm not putting the money in this project. So I already had the 4L80 off. I don't really want to run an electronic uh transmission so currently have a turbo 400 that we pulled off the shelf on here just for mock-up it's no good but my thoughts are if i build the car to where a turbo 400 will fit i'll be able to swap to a turbo 350 as well so currently got it stabbed in here kind of and i need to cut out some firewall i roughly marked it where she needs to come out and that's just a rough rough idea um I pulled the factory panel in here out real quick. It only had three bolts in it. But obviously, more up there needs to come out. And this needs to come out so that I get that transmission higher. Um, I don't want this thing... I don't want the drive the drivetrain sitting real low in this car. Ideally, what I would like to do is the bottom of this car will be solid skid plate all the way back to the trailing arms. That way nothing can get to the drivetrain. Um, sometimes these trailer races, you get a lot of debris on the track. I don't want stuff getting up in there into my motor. Uh, yeah. That's where we're at right now. Um, I'm probably going to pull this out, cut a giant hole in the firewall, and go from there. So far, the engine hoists did nothing but give me problems. I uh, broke a wheel off of it and stuff, so... Too much more of that. I'm calling it a day. Uh, yeah. So let's get to cutting on some stuff. I am calling it quits for the night and we'll probably wrap this video up right here. I did not get as far as I wanted to. I've got a giant hole hacked in the firewall and the problems I had was the, uh, let me find it here. The controls, the stuff right here, that is the controls for this cow bed. Um, that stuff was all mounted right in the way. So that took quite a bit of time to get out of there. My goal for this video was to get front frame rails underneath this thing. And uh, looks like most of the day tomorrow was supposed to be in like 12 to 15 degrees. And um, my little furnace out here is not going to keep up. So probably going to wrap this video up. And I will see you guys next week. Maybe... Uh, Maybe I have something midweek. I don't know. But for right now, that's what, uh, that's where we're at. Got the Turbo 400 on there. I haven't even picked it up to set it in there to see how it's going to go after I cut that. Actually, I need to cut more of that tunnel before I even try that. So, uh, yeah. And I got to come up with a better setup. This setup sucks. That holds that motor all stupid. And um, it's going to be impossible to try to mark anything up with that. So if anything, I might work on that a little bit tomorrow. I don't know if that's anything film worthy. 
But anyway, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Make sure you uh, smash that bell, like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week.